Remember the 80s? The makeup, the hair, the music? Remember mixtapes? Putting your favorite jams on one tape and then handing it off to your school crush? Cassette tapes were it. Now wouldn't it be nice to revisit those memories and put your own creative spin on it? Copy that. So the cassette tape gave us a dilemma right off the bat. Although there are flat sides, there are also many holes and contours to its shape. So do we do a one-part mold or a two-part mold with plasticine? We went simple and went ahead with a one-part mold, but you can also try the two-part mold method like we did when we duplicated an old phone and a starfish. Onto the mold. The first thing we did was find a box or container big enough to surround the cassette. We had a few clear acrylic cubes that could fit the tape on an angle, so we went with that. It would also be a good idea to build your own box so that you don't waste a ton of mold making material. The more snug the fit, the more molds you can make. We wanted to make it easier to see the pour, so we went with the cube. After removing all of the magnetic tape inside, the next thing we needed to do was plug those holes. So we grabbed some Play-Doh. Wherever we saw a gap, we sealed it up. That way we would be able to remove the cassette from the mold later on. Don't worry about the two signature center holes. We'll be able to get those back later. We then glued the cassette to the bottom of the box so that nothing moved once the liquid silicone was added. Next it was time for the mold making material. Mold making material is a two-part system that conveniently comes in two different colors, white and dark blue. This way you'll know when the mixture is ready once the color becomes one consistent medium blue hue. We measured out equal amounts of part A and part B and stirred it up. You want to be thorough to ensure a perfect cure. Next, we poured the mixture into our acrylic cube and over our cassette tape. Another great thing about mold making material is that it only takes three to four hours at room temperature for it to fully solidify. After poking the mold to ensure it was ready, we had to remove the cassette from the mold. We weren't able to dig our fingers down the side of the mold, so we took the lazy way out and broke the mold out. Then we just pulled the tape out and bada boom, the mold was complete. We were now set to make exact replicas of this object over and over and over again. You can use many different substances to fill the mold, such as polyurethane and wax, but we recommend art resin in combination with our line of resin tints. Just like mold making material, art resin is a simple one to one ratio of resin and hardener. Measure out equal parts of both solutions and mix thoroughly for three minutes. You'll have approximately 45 minutes of working time with the resin mixture before it will begin to set. Now it was time to add that style and pizzazz we talked about earlier. Resin tint is the perfect complement to art resin as it allows you to tint the resin mixture in a wide variety of colors. Grab any color of resin tint and pour a few drops into the art resin, then just mix it all together. We next poured our tinted resin into the mold right to the top and let it sit for at least 24 hours. Art resin is hard to the touch after 24 hours, but a full, hardened cure will take 72. Finally, it was time to remove the cassette tape from the mold. Super cool with incredible detail throughout the cassette. You can repeat this process many times over as the mold is strong enough to make multiple copies. Now about those holes. We grabbed a small tool and drilled into those holes to complete the look. We did a couple of different versions and decided to create a full cassette tape art piece display. We were not disappointed. Hopefully this video inspires you to create your own nostalgic art. It really is fun with endless possibilities. Thanks for watching. Mold making material. Do you copy?